Commissioner of Police David Morris says four BVI landers are among 13 recruits being trained locally to serve in the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. The force is conducting its first on-island recruit training for the nine males and five females. Commissioner Morris says 14 out of the 19 current auxiliary officers are also BVI landers, and he sees this as an entry point for persons to get involved in the police service. The police commissioner spoke with Sean Rose about this and other matters. You've begun training officers locally for the first time. How yeah. is that process going? How many people are involved? Right. Well, we've. Um Prior to this year, we've always trained our uh, recruits in Barbados. Uh, it's always been an issue for me, uh, one, because it's quite expensive sending uh, officers to Barbados for six months. Secondly, they're not locally trained, so they're very much uh, in embedded into a Barbadian-type policing structure and culture. Uh, and what we, we started to do was bring them in early and give them local induction training, send them to Barbados, and then when they came back, we had to sort of do the localized bit. Uh, so what we've uh, done this year is uh, uh, sort of forged ahead and decided we're going to train locally. We've uh, working in partnership with uh, the community college, HLSCC, uh, and we've putting uh, 13 recruits uh, from this year through local training. So they're going doing local law, local legislation, the constitution, local procedures. They're, uh, they're out and about in the community doing their training, so the community have seen them when they're on their early morning runs through Road Town, when they've been doing their swimming over in Nanny Key, when they're on the campus at HLSCC. Uh, we're able to utilize them uh, for things, for events such as the festival that's coming up in August, uh, the Queen's Birthday Parade, uh, they've been on parade, etc. So they are more engaged straight away into the community. Part of the program is it's a modular program, so that at the moment they're in their classroom phase. Then they'll come out uh, with what we uh, will call tutor constables, experienced constables, who will take them out, uh, engage them straight into the community, and develop them, what we would call street uh, policing, in terms of putting that academic theory into practice on the street. So straight away they are becoming uh, RVIPF, BVI police officers, and we're not losing them to Barbados for six months. I know it's difficult sometimes to attract young people to policing. So yeah. how are you going about doing this? Well, I think um, one of the, you know, the issues that I've experienced in the five years I've been here is trying to attract uh, young BV Islanders into the, into the police service. A uh, number of issues around that. One is around the standard. You know, we've reviewed the standard and the, the recruitment process. We've not lowering the standard for policing. Uh, you know, people still have to go through the examination for English and maths and general knowledge and get a 60% pass mark in each one. They still have to be physically fit, uh, medically examined, do the, phys uh, the fitness testing and, 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 and the interviews, uh, and that's not been reduced. Uh, but what, uh, when we speak to the, to the recruits uh, and those that don't, don't, make, don't uh, apply, particularly during the fairs, is also, is also this sort of perception, what is policing? in the BVI. If I'm a BVI Islander and I've lived here all my life, my family are from here, am I almost joining the police and ending up in confrontational situations? So, you know, so it is difficult uh, to, to recruit, you know, the, out of the 13 that we've got at the moment, four are BVI Islanders uh, that we've got. Out of those four, two are from the auxiliary force. So what we're looking at very much is around our auxiliary force. We're, we're increasing the um, our auxiliary force to 23. Uh, we, we got permission from government to increase the establishment from 19 to 23 because of the fact that we want to increase our staff in the control room with the CCTV cameras. Uh, and what we've, and out of that, um, out of the uh, current uh, strength of uh, auxiliary officers that we've got, 18 at the moment, 14 of them are BV Islanders. So, you know, 80% almost is, is BV Islanders. So, what we're trying to focus on in terms of breaking that, about those barriers of what is it like being a police officer, BV Islander, is to try and attract the young BV Islanders, youngsters into the police who are into the auxiliary force. By local training, it allows them to see what the police is about and then move over to the regular police force. Uh, so a transfer process from auxiliary officer to the regulars. And of course this year, because we're doing the local training, we've, you know, we've had two that have applied as being auxiliary officers have applied and now uh, uh, joined us as uh, recruits, police officer recruit. 
I don't do quotas. Whether you're male or female, you apply, you go through the process, and if you're successful, you're appointed. Is an issue for the, for the women officers that I expect the same from them as I would from my male officers uh, in terms of their dedication and their professionalism. And I get that. You know, um, we, uh, one of our senior officers, our superintendents, was retiring at the end of the year. We uh, waiting for the Police Service Commission to have a promotion process. Uh, we'll be putting forward um, three uh, chief inspectors, uh, one of whom is a woman. You, you know, you never know, we may end up with our first woman superintendent in this force. You know, and that's, you know, that's the way, uh, you know, the force is modernizing. So again, my encouragement to, particularly to the youngsters out there, you know, we are looking for auxiliary officers. As I said, we've got, uh, 20, we've got an establishment at 23 at the moment. We've got 18 uh, employed. We've got vacancies. If you want to join us, please, please, please apply. Uh, Chief Inspector Van de Poel on board in Guada was instrumental in getting a group of young men to uh, repaint a wall where they had uh, created some graffiti right. work yeah. on the yeah. wall. And um, I saw some photos of it on Facebook. What do you think about uh, this this uh, revolution, so to speak, in corrective measures? Well, certainly, you know, what we you know, the technical term for it is probably called restorative justice. You know, if you commit criminal damage, graffiti, and that sort of thing. Instead of arresting these youngsters and locking them up, you know, is to get them to actually repair the damage. You know, um, and in, in Jackie Vanderpool's uh, case, who's over in Virgin Gorda at the moment, and doing a fantastic job over there. She's a local officer. Uh, her mother's over there. Her family is from there. Uh, you know, and she's doing a very good job there. She knows a lot of the locals uh, as well. Um, and that's the sort of initiative that I applaud. I would rather, you know, instead of locking up these youngsters in the cells and in balls and gut is actually to get them to do that sort of work you know it, it does require parent uh, support for it because you know at the end of the day uh, we'll facilitate it we'll manage it but the parents have to be part of the process other areas that we you know uh, we would look at is things like the vic meeting with the victim you know the graffiti on the wall of somebody's house what's the impact of the person living in that house do the youngsters know how it affects them uh, so, you know, and that's all a part of this uh, restorative justice program, which I do know the government is, is actively looking at, particularly the Ministry of Education.